Good afternoon everyone and welcome to your daily encouragement uh, from the Psalms. Here we are on uh, Psalm 83 and uh, I'm going to let you take a moment and read it now. Okay, uh, this is the last of um, Asaph's Psalms and it's a, it's a poignant Psalm. Like I suppose that's in one sense that's a silly thing to say because Every piece of scripture is poignant. Every piece of scripture is good. Um, this this psalm has a has a context which speaks into the history of the people of Israel, and in this psalm, uh, Israel Israel faces opposition basically on all sides. There are ten Gentile nations named in this psalm. Um, and I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce some of them, but there are 10 Gentile nations and their intention is to destroy Israel. And as Asaph writes this psalm, he, he feels that tension. And it's in it then he, he, preach, he prays on behalf of all the people of Israel in the face of such opposition. And it begs the question, when fierce opposition comes in your life, when a sense of danger is heightened in your life, what do you do? What do you pray? How, how do you pray? And here Asaph is modeling a suggested way of praying because as we know in all of these psalms there are ways of praying in different circumstances and contexts but in this particular case the nation of Israel faces uh, an opposition a coalition of 10 Gentile states whose intention is to wipe them is to wipe them out and so then Asaph says well I'm going to pray about that and he begins by pleading with the Lord to see what is happening. Now we know that the Lord knows everything, but a people dependent on God tell the Lord what we know, what we want him to know, what we need him to know about us as individuals and our circumstances. So he starts by praying that God can see what is going on. Lord, do you see what's going on? Verse one, O God, do not keep silent. Do not hold your peace or be still, O God, for behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. And then in verse four, they say, that's the, the coalition of nations, come let us wipe them out as a nation. Come let us wipe them out as a nation. And that's a, that's a heavy statement to make. And Asaph saying this in a, in a heartfelt way to the Lord, who of course understands what is going on. But as a man and a nation dependent on God, we bring our prayers and thoughts and concerns and fears and worries and doubts and joys and highs and lows. You get the picture. You bring it all to God. So Lord, do you see what's going on? Can you see what's going on? They want to wipe us out as a nation. And of course, we're sitting here as 21st century Christians who in our relatively recent history, certainly the history of the last 75 to 80 years, there are people alive today who lived through an attempt by Hitler to wipe out the nation of Israel. So Asaph's plea is not an ancient plea. It has relatively contemporary relevance and of course speaks into many of the situations and the politics of the Middle East today. 
And that's not to express a view either way. It's simply to say that is what is going on. It's, a, it's an observation rather than an opinion. So Asaph is saying, can you see what is going on? Look, see what is going on. Then from verses 9 to 15, he urges the Lord to do what is necessary. Uh, and it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, block of verses here because, because uh, how shall I put it? Asaph, while he wants the Lord to do his will, in other words, Lord, may your will be done, also has a preference for how it should be done. He brings his own solution into his prayer, which perhaps is not something we should do. So in verse 13, he says, Oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. And he has a particular way in which he would like these, he would like this these enemies dealt with. And I think in our own prayers, we have a we have a tendency sometimes to to bring an opinion to the prayer, whilst at the same time, we maybe exercise a little bit of a double standard. We bring our own opinion to the prayer, but we also ask the Lord to do his will. And the two in one sense are compatible, but it's not wrong to ask. There's a fine, there's a fine line here. So he says, oh God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. And flip me, Lord, just destroy them. Just destroy them. And as it goes on, as fire consumes the forest, as the flames set the mountains ablaze, so may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace. He really wants the Lord to, to deal with the enemies. And he's listed them all prior to that. So having asked the Lord to, Lord, can you see what's going on? Don't hold back, Lord. Can you see what's going on? Lord, we pray that you will do what is necessary. And he prays for their destruction. And he prays for it in a, in a particular way. He then turns the psalm to making sure that everyone glorifies the Lord. He wants the Lord to be glorified. May your name be glorified. So in whatever you do, Lord, Asaph is saying, I can live with it. Whatever you do, Lord, I can handle it. Whatever you do, Lord, despite my personal preferences, I understand. But Lord, whatever happens, may your name be glorified. May you be exalted. And it's a, it's a fitting way, isn't it, to, to end any prayer. And we do it in the Lord's Prayer. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We, we seek to glorify God. It's not a, it's not a catch-all or at the end of a prayer. It's the consummation of the prayer in the glorification of God. So we've got a nice little modelling here for when we face fierce opposition. Lord, can you see what is happening? Don't be silent on this, Lord. Do what is necessary and may you be glorified. See, ultimately, in everything that we pray and do and think indeed in, in Christ, we do so based on his promises and what happened at the cross. We stand on those promises. We trust them. And it's the ability in times of stress and opposition and indeed crisis to latch on to those promises and pray through them that helps our faith to grow. 
The Lord knows what is going on with us. He can see the opposition. But as people dependent on him, we need to reveal our dependence. And we do that partly through prayer. By talking to him and speaking to him of, of our needs. And we know when we, when we go through these Psalms that there's hardly an emotion that's not covered. And the truth is the Lord can handle every emotion that we tend to throw at him. Indeed, he wants to hear it. As people dependent on him, we must reveal our dependence. And especially at, in times of peril. So here, 10 nations seek to wipe out the people of Israel. Asaph appeals to God that they might be destroyed. But when whatever the Lord does, may he be glorified. Asaph stands on the promises of God. Asaph reveals the dependence of the people of Israel on the God of Israel. Do we model that in our own lives? Do we reveal our dependence on God in our own lives? I pray his blessing upon you this day and evermore. In Jesus' name, amen.